Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Mark Steiner. Good to have you all with us. The Bipartisan Policy Center released a report saying that the U.S. government will most likely not be able to pay its bills by the first half of September. Some are pressuring Congress to suspend or raise the federal debt, but Congress is going to recess in August and lowers the raised debt limits, period. But the government is bringing in less than it's spending, in part because of the serious drop in corporate tax rate and the revenues it generates. Many fear that millions of Americans could lose their benefits in a very serious way here we're talking, and that could participate a stock market crash. Underlying issues like military spending and our tax structures are significant reasons for all this taking place at this moment, and the danger to lurk ahead. But most in politics are loath to address any of this. How serious? What needs to be done? Is Polonius right? We'll talk about that too. We turned to Bill Black, who has been a financial regulator, is now a professor of economics and law at the University of Missouri, Kansas City, author of The Best Way to Rob a Bank is to Own One, and of course is a frequent and consistent guest here on The Real News. And Bill, welcome back. Thank you. So Polonius did say neither a borrower nor a lender be, though I think our founding fathers and the rest didn't pay much attention to that and say we're always in debt through slavery and other trades. But so, what, so it, 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 where are we with this? How serious is what we're facing? Well, in terms of economics, it's not serious at all. It's silly season. <laughs> what does that mean? Uh, in Washington, D.C. It means that we have all the money we want, and thank God uh, our forefathers uh, and mothers uh, borrowed, uh, or we'd be a vastly poorer nation. Um, so this is just pure politics, has nothing to do with fundamental economics, absolutely zero reason why the United States has any need to default. And if you actually refuse to increase the debt limit, you could cause a default. And if you did, it would be unbelievably horrific um, for not just the United States, but the world. It would send a panic uh, through the system. So guess what? They're not going to do that. Uh, or if they do, you know, we'll kick them all out of office for uh, total stupidity. What's really going on? is timing uh, is what? as you said timing mm -hmm. as you suggested okay so it's not uh science when exactly how much revenue is going to come in and when you're going to hit this debt limit and again the debt limit is economically absolutely irrelevant give me some, uh, one second what does that mean when you say that it means that we have a sovereign currency and we owe debts only in our own currency so there's no issue of our ability to pay I mean, the idea that you can run out of dollars when you make dollars <laughs> is really stupid, right? Uh, so uh, the, the economics are just utter nonsense. The politics are real, but, you know, every year it's difficult politics and they find their way to do it and they'll find their way to do it again. Now, the fun thing about it is what you highlighted in your introduction. None of this is supposed to be happening relatively short term because we were promised uh, that by slashing the corporate tax rate, a couple of things were going to happen. One, corporations would stop cheating. Yes, right. Uh -huh. Hold your breath. Hold your breath. This is so naive, <laughs> you know, that it's just pure propaganda. Uh, but the second thing was Oh, that you're going to create a burst of corporate activity. And look, the stock market's up. And so corporations should be making a lot more money. And if they're making a lot more money, then corporate tax revenues, even at a lower rate, will come in pretty generously. And, guess and what? you didn't may happen. know that we are giving the Trump administration on our behalf the presidential freedom award to an economist, Art Laffer, who has the honor of being 100% wrong on every major prediction he's ever made. <laughs> One of which was after he screwed up Kansas, uh, that he, you know, if we just slash taxes, particularly corporate taxes, we just have so much money rolling in, we wouldn't know what to do with it, and we would suddenly be moving towards surplus and yada, yada, yada. Okay, so. We knew, <laughs> surprise, that this was a lie, <laughs> that he had been wrong 100% of the time, and he would continue to be wrong because he, what he says is nonsense. Um, okay, so that's happened, and they are shocked, shocked, 
that our Laffer's projections <laughs> proved to be false. Now the timing problem, uh, this coming up against the debt uh, ceiling is going to occur when Congress wants to be on a holiday. <laughs> and Congress loves to denounce those damn socialist Europeans, except when it comes to holiday, more precisely their holiday. Right. So they take six weeks too. More than we <laughs> In get. In Europe yes. at exactly the same time the Europeans do. They love it. And so they're pissed that they might have to come back early <laughs> from their vacation and take a, what is supposedly a difficult vote that, though in fact it almost never is all that difficult to vote uh, to raise the debt limit. Now, Trump is insane it, from his own terms in letting this happen, right? It, it doesn't give him leverage to pass legislation Indeed, it gives, if anybody, the Democrats leverage, um, assuming Nancy Pelosi rediscovers how to negotiate after the fiasco uh, uh, on the border. Um, but the Democrats are in a position to win things, not lose things because of the debt limit. And the Republicans and Trump could have had a deal mon many months ago uh, to extend the debt limit such that not only would we not bump against it in two months, we wouldn't bump up against it for two years. And then, you know, that would have taken all kinds of pressure off the Trump administration. Um, and again, the worst possible thing is the Republican Tea Party uh, has always opposed these uh, debt expansions and, and then often they vote for them, you know, but uh, officially in their dogma, they have to oppose this. Well, God forbid they should actually start believing in their, their dogmas uh, because then Trump would be in considerably more difficulty. So, so, but let me get the crux before we bubble together some of the issues here. I mean, the, I, I said during the opening that well, the issues around military spending our tax structure seem to be, from what I've read, significant reasons why this is occurring, A. I mean, and B, that we are literally taking in less money than we're spending, even though we're spending less money than we were before in some ways, because um, we're, we're giving all these corporate tax breaks and others, and we're not, and cutting back on social programs. So, I mean, is all that wrong, what I just said? No, but it, don't, it doesn't mean that you wouldn't increase the debt limit, and it doesn't mean that the answer is to default, and it sure as heck doesn't mean that the Congress is about to come back in emergency session and slash spending uh, by a <laughs> uh, trillion dollars. Uh, you know, you, you can hold your breath all you want, <laughs> and that, that <laughs> one uh, is not going to happen. And you can see what uh, is, is all this producing inflation. No, we have no inflation. We can't reach the level targeted by the Fed that they supposedly want us to reach. Uh, we haven't been able to con uh, consistently even come terribly close to uh, that limit. Uh, debt, uh, interest rates um, on uh, all kinds of sovereign debt uh, and even some corporates in much of Europe are negative. Right, So it's not that there's some inflationary expectation. Indeed, the fears because um, the yield curve has inverted, and that just means that long-term rates are lower than short-term interest rates, um, that tends to be an indicator of recession. And of course, that's what Trump fears. I mean, the last thing any incumbent president wants going into right. a re-election um, is uh, a recession staring in the face. So. Uh, he's not going to be pushing for fiscal austerity uh, in these circumstances. And you can see that he's hammering the Fed chair to further reduce uh, interest rates. So, uh, uh, so let me ask this quick question. So, so A, who is this bipartisan policy center? Uh, and, and what, in, in, in short term here, what, what, in, what would be the response to them about what should be done from your perspective? Oh, you, should raise, you should raise the debt limit. <laughs> You know, and they will do that. Uh, it's just how much storm and drawing uh, theater will all have to go through <coughs> before they uh, do the inevitable. But again, this has next to nothing to do with any underlying uh, economics. It's pure politics. 
and they if they had been half a brain in the Republican caucus or the Trump administration, uh, they would have done this long term and uh, many months uh, ago. And of course, it's going to upset all of these clowns to have to come back from vacation. Or not all, <laughs> but far too many of them to come back because Washington, D.C. in August uh, is really unpleasant. <laughs> it's hot and it's muggy. And it's a it swamp. Has lots of storms every 5 p.m. You know, the, the heavens open and the lightning flashes and all those good types of things. So and, it, and seriously, right now, we've all seen the pictures of the flooding. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So is this is this though is is this in part just an emotional response, a visceral emotional response to the word debt and raising debt and the whole notion without really thinking about what that means in a larger economic sense? Is that what this really is? Yeah, it's all that in politics. And there's a reason I'm wearing this tie. This tie is defaulted German bonds, <laughs> which is always the fear. We're we're just months away from Germany, you know. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, it, it's all the Weimar Republic and the, the economy is going to be destroyed, yada, yada, yada. Uh, and uh, Only an economist who wear that tie. You know that, don't you, Bill? <laughs> Only an economist who wear that tie. <laughs> Only economists would get the kick out of wearing the tie. <laughs> Especially for this kind of discussion, explaining, yes, I understand it's the boogeyman. <laughs> Relax, chill. We need to chill. Thank you. I needed to chill. Thank you, Bill Black. It's always good to chill with you. <laughs> <laughs> All back <laughs> day of the week. Thanks so much. We were talking with Bill Black. And now we can all chill out and not worry about the debt and know what the shenanigans are all about. And I'm Mark Steiner here for the Real News Network. Thank you all for joining us. Take care. Mm -hmm.